Hey, welcome back into our real estate podcast this week. We are talking about the market conditions in the Reno Sparks area in Northern Nevada. We're going to answer one of the questions that's out there is why is that we have 8% interest rates, Brian, and prices are going up. That's the number one question that we're going to address this week uh, on this market report for November of 2023. Then you want to stick around to the end because we're going to talk about a topic that a lot of sellers and buyers are coming up against, which is sellers concessions. And we're going to go over something that a lot of people don't know is why are sellers doing that? And then why are there limits on government mortgages uh, based on uh, what mortgage you get? Obviously, if you're a buyer, you can't have the seller pay $100,000 for your closing costs. And we're gonna go over why that is and how best to use it for buyers and sellers out there. So once again, my name is Ken Angst, team leader of the Angst Real Estate team here in Northern Nevada. If you like our videos, please consider subscribing. Our last video that Brian and I did has 3,800 views. So we're going wild. Um, so like them, subscribe, and then if you hit the notifications, you'll get these great videos as they come out. So. Uh, we're joined again by Brian Cushing with American Financial Network. Yes, sir. What's going on? Hey, uh, it's official. Northern Nevada is live in, at American Financial Network. So we're uh, excited to give you this report this week, and uh, I love your topic. Okay, concessions. great. Yeah, concessions are an important thing, um, and they're necessary now for sellers to sell houses. Hey, but that doesn't sound like their price is very strong. That's right. So we'll go over that in a second. So let's hop in. Talk about the market conditions. This is Reno Sparks. These are resale homes. And uh, we're going to quickly go over the numbers and then we're going to hop into our topic this week. So uh, we're going to first talk about the number one thing that people are talking about, which is interest rates are 8%. And if I look at the report here, Brian, uh, the median home price for the Reno Sparks went up. Year over year, six and a half percent. Month over month, one point eight percent to five hundred and seventy-five thousand. I'd say that's pretty solid. It's pretty solid for eight percent. So the question is, why is it? Why are rates to a point where seven and a half, eight percent, and why, um, why are prices up? Uh, there's not enough homes for sale. That's the simple answer. But you've got. You know, price is up at 575 for the median price. That just means that half the homes sold for more than that, half the, for less than that. Uh, there's not enough homes for sale, so we happen to be seeing the, the higher end, I guess, higher end, you know, uh, equally above 575 as below 575, uh, regardless of the rate. I mean, I, I, the, uh, in October, specifically these numbers are on October, we did see interest rates at 8%, and then they've since backed off in November. Yep. Uh, so whether that can loosen up the market and get more people to, to close transactions, we're going to have a key f conversation in a, in a minute in some of these numbers. There's just not enough homes coming up for sale to, yep. to advance that number. Yep. And then a lot of people are stuck. Not stuck, but they have great rates yeah, Well, they from they, the great refinance. They're stuck. They, they have a great <laughs> house and a great loan. Uh, hopefully they're happy with their house. If they're not happy with it, it's going to have to be pretty, it's going to be painful to let go of the lower interest rate yep. or the lower payment to trade up. So, um, you know, there's going to be the three D's that are always going to take place in people's lives that might, uh, shake that loose. What are the D's? The, <laughs> <laughs> so the three D's are, you've got debt. So if somebody passes away, they're going to need to sell the property, the, the estate or whatever. Uh, you know, there's going to be probates. Uh, then there's divorces. I hate to break it to you, but that, that happens all the time. Yeah. I've had, you know, way too many conversations over the years with past clients and, and friends you know, that just, figure out what do we do with our house right how do I keep it do I need to sell it sometimes selling is the cleanest thing to do uh, and then you get debt right people just get over their head with other debt uh, the house is there's a debt that you might have a low interest rate on it but if you can't afford the payment yep you got three D's go. so uh, so yeah it's it's a combination of all those things so uh, I think prices are gonna probably stay steady um, let's talk about closed sales because that's a big indication of why we're in the situation yeah well 9% lower in sales, so 342 sales for the Reno Sparks General uh, for the marketplace. That's off 8.8% from last month. Happens to be exactly 8.8% .8 off. I don't know. Last I want that year. checked. Yeah. By the well, I'm going to let you check it. That's, 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 check your, it. that's your department. <laughs> hey, that's just kind of odd that's both 
down 8% year over year and 8% month over month. But I think we would have noticed that last month. But 342 exactly. sales for October is a pretty low number. Yeah. That's a number that we usually see in the depths of winter. So, Well, I don't want to skip forward, but there's not even enough listings coming on the market to, to capture the number of sales that we had over the summer just a couple months ago. So. Now we're, And then uh, we're going to move on to median uh, days to contract. Simply put, you list your house and you're going to get a contract for the median house around one month, which is uh, still lower than the average if you look at you know, the last 20 years, but one month is a really good number compared to what we saw uh, in the last couple of years. So. so that's just getting the contract. So I can list my house and within 30 days or about 31 days later, somebody makes me an offer that, I, that, that I'm not going to refuse. Yep, accept. And then you probably have another 30 days. So most houses we see that are um, appropriately priced um, usually close within that 60 to 75 day range right now. So that's what we're going to say. Then I can move on. Yep. 60 to 70 days. So might be a little longer over the holidays. Lots of holidays coming up. So keep that in mind. Um, what about median price? Median, like sold price per square foot? Per price per square foot. Yeah, yep. 309, which was basically 1% higher than last month. Yeah, we, we talked about this before. It's $300 a square foot. It's a really easy way to just take a $575,000 house, multiply it by the square footage, and um, you're going to come up with around $309 a square foot. Yep. So, so 310 is a good number if you're out there just kind of eyeballing and figuring out if the seller is in the ballpark if you're a buyer. I like how you skip the list price receipt. We're talking, we're not with that. But, the, but people are getting less than they asked for their house. We'll say yeah, that it's, one. yeah. So <laughs> don't believe in that number. So uh, new listings. So this is where it comes into why prices are so high. 373 new listings. Yeah. So you can't buy more than 373 houses. If there's and that's Reno Sparks. Listings. That's a wide swath of houses. I mean, there's a lot of people who live in the Reno Sparks area, Washoe County, essentially. 300,000 houses. Yeah, and we only have 373 new listings come on. So yeah. um, down 11% year over year and about 11% month over month. So down a lot. Um, pretty low for October, the time frame. Usually, again, we see these in January, February, March yeah. when it's cold out. So uh, that's one of the reasons why we have prices staying pretty steady. Now, what about active inventory? 822, so that's down again, so 6.3% less than last month, 35% less than last year, so you just have less choices to pick from, and there's not a lot of new homes coming into that, that um, the stable, so to speak, so there's less to pick from, and uh, it might be uh, time to just kick back and wait a few more months to see the right house come, uh, come up if you're in the market. Yep, I have a lot of buyers being very selective, which is uh, a good thing, I think, with how rates are and how prices are but i've had quite a few clients over the years be able to take advantage that were buyers of a seller that needed to sell in the winter time we're going in the winter time um and especially right now there's not a lot of people looking rates are a little higher you get that a little higher rate right now but then you're able to refinance into the future so well, i mean if i'm going to sell my house i you know by the time i put the christmas lights on i'm not going to do it right after i have to take that back down unless you have to really do it for some other reason one of the 3ds <laughs> the 3d <coughs> would some reason so um active uh, month supply of inventory we've gone over this uh what you do is you add up the active inventory plus the new sales divided by or the new listings divided by the closings and you get how much month supply of inventory now believe it or not we're still in the seller's market uh, just because there's no inventory. So we're at 2.4 uh, months of inventory locally, meaning that it's a seller's market and a balanced market is usually between four and six months. So now, now wait, so earlier you said we're gonna have seller concessions. So if it's a seller's market, why are seller concessions so necessary? Well, um, there's a lot of people out there that are looking, particularly buyers, that are looking at interest rates and they're thinking to themselves, do I wanna pay 8% in the, basically the unknown of what's going on in the future here. So buyers are a little edgy and sellers to get your household right now, you're gonna have to do seller concessions. So. Well, is that because they didn't do a good job keeping the house up and it didn't pass muster for some reason? Um, there might be several reasons. They might overprice it, overprice it to start. Um, they're so a lot of- A little greedy? A little greedy. Okay. Um, and that's when seller concessions- Because some realtor them. told them it's a seller's market. They said they could be greedy. Well, you have to know, that's a good point. And you have to really know the market. So as you're going into winter, you can't really be greedy like you would because there's such a low number of people looking 
So if you're going to sell in the wintertime, you probably have to be a little bit more aggressive on your price going into a time when there's not a lot of people. And then right now, particularly, we have a lot of unknowns in the world. And then, or you could be flexible with your price in concessions. That's right. And then, you know, right now, if you're thinking about selling your house, you're kind of at the tail end. We're already in November. By the time you get it ready, it's probably December. Your best bet may be to wait, <clears throat> if you can, four or five months and get into a season where you can be a little bit more aggressive with the price, knowing that there's more activity from people and hopefully the rates go down. But if the 3D's got you, here's the concessions. So do you want to start go over the concessions? Yeah, so that's the market report. If you have any questions about that, send us a message. Um, if you want to go over a particular neighborhood, we have the ability to do that. But let's jump into one of the strategies that we see, Brian sees from a buyer side and I see from a seller side and buyers, which is seller concessions. So first question I have for you right here, Brian, is what is a seller concession? A lot of people don't even know what that is. Some buyer comes in and says, I want you some seller concessions. Does that mean like, it's like what does that giveaway. mean? It sounds, it sounds yeah, awesome. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> if you're a seller, it doesn't sound that awesome. So it's uh, so a buyer buying a home has closing costs. Uh, they're going to put their own down payment. So their down payment's you know, going to be specific to their price and how much, you know, if they're putting 10% down, 30% down, whatever the number is. Uh, now the concessions come in with you have closing expenses, like you're talking about interest rates. There's a cost to getting a loan. There's a cost to getting the title company. There's a cost to the county to transfer your, your property taxes. Right. So uh, <clears throat> you take all those costs together and they can be uh, credited from the seller's funds. So if they have the house for, let's just use 575 as our example, uh, but the, they took $15,000 from that 575 and gave it to the buyer to pay for their closing cost. First, that paid for pretty much all their actual closing costs then they would leave funds that they could use into their financing. So that could be going towards a rate buy down. So if the rates today is seven and a half and you can get it to 7.25, fantastic, right? That helps the buyer. It's an incentive in a lot of cases and builders use this as an incentive to show you a better payment while they still have this really high price. So you can keep the prices high and maybe that's kind of the conversation around the median price remaining where it is. The, the sales price is coming in based on the price that transfers the two parties transact, uh, but the concession or the closing cost credits could be used to the buyer's advantage to pay down points. So there's a lot of stuff right there that you just covered. So number one, we see a lot of builders because they know they're in a pinch and they have inventory coming up that, um, that are offering seller concessions in lower interest rates. Well, they're I not see. in the business of owning homes, right? Yeah. They're so in the business of selling homes that are built, like building the home and getting rid of it. So here's the number tip, number one tip for buyers. Go look at new home builders. Uh, try and find some homes that they have an inventory, meaning that uh, the person in the office got the upgrades, they built the house and it's sitting there in inventory, especially here in the next two months because builders under pressure because they want to get things closed by the end of the year. They have a certain period. So that's a, one way you can really take an advantage it's like buying a car on the last day of the month. Yes, because <laughs> there's a big rush to get all the numbers in to make you look better as a company. Absolutely. But the number one thing that you need to do if you're going to use, go look at new builders, call a realtor. We have so many people that call us that, you know, they go into the real estate office without a realtor to start, and then all of a sudden they are overwhelmed by the contract. The, you know, the, the builders are using their own lender, their own title company, and it's still a big process that you should be represented by a third party. Consider using a realtor, and it's free. So that's just a little plug for that. Secondly, we're talking about, um, you talked a lot about- Well, there's limits. Seller, we'll talk about limits in a second, but you're talking a lot about different types of, um, what's the right word? Reoccurring and non-reoccurring closing costs. There's different types of closing costs. Yeah, what is it? Why? What's a non-reoccurring? What's a reoccurring? And sure. do the limits matter, or is it just the aggregate of Let's reoccurring, non-reoccurring? Well, when you get a settlement statement, it's going to say how much your closing costs were, right? So the closing cost total can, you know, both recurring and non-recurring, which I'll explain, can all be paid for from seller concessions. Um, so let's say that you have non-recurring closing costs. These happen one time. So if you pay one point on your loan, that's a one-time fee. What's the point? 1% of the loan amount, and that okay. can help you offset the current interest rate down to a lower interest rate in return, right? So you're paying up front for the advantage of a lower interest rate, 
but you can use the seller's funds to pay for it. So keep in mind that one point, it's a lot of people think it's off the sale price. It's at, off the loan, correct? Absolutely. So if you're bringing $100,000 in on that $500,000 example, 1% off 475. Yeah, so, okay. so that's 50. important. Keep going, this yeah. is great. And then you've got an appraisal, it happens one time, so that's not gonna recur again. Okay. You've got the Washoe County is gonna charge you a transfer tax, that's gonna happen the one time. Now your recurring closing costs would be your continual property taxes. So you will have property taxes and that's a recurring fee, it happens in the future, but when you close, you're gonna pay some of it. You're gonna pay the seller back for anything they've already paid in advance, so say it's November, so as they've paid through the end of December, uh, and you're going to take over the property on uh, December 1st, you're going to pay them back for that 30 days that they already prepaid your taxes. So that's a recurring fee. Okay. And then there will be a future tax bill that we can pay. HOA fees. Your insurance. Insurance, yeah. Those are all re now, recurring. Now, so let's talk about limits because you're talking about two different types, recurring, non-recurring. Is it the aggregate for the limit? Total, yeah. Okay, so now we're talking about government-backed loans. So if you're going to an owner of finance, that's a different discussion, correct? Yeah, well, I mean, you could just write it into the deal. Okay, so if you're owner finance, that's a different discussion. But we're talking Fannie and Freddie. What is a government-backed loan, and what are the limits for the different uh, programs? Well, I mean, there's there's government-backed loans is in the sense that based on how much you borrow could determine whether you're eligible for certain types of loans. So Fannie, Freddie, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac have loan limits that were this year will expire at the end of the year at six hundred and forty-three thousand. It's actually going to go up pretty significantly. So there's already uh, lenders offering loans over six hundred fifty thousand uh, in anticipation of their new limits. So as long as you're borrowing less than, let's just call it six hundred fifty thousand or seven hundred fifty thousand, actually, sorry, uh, then you'll be eligible. Your loan could be sold to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, but they'll only buy it if you follow their rules. So if you're putting ten percent down, okay. So if you have ten percent down, you could have six percent of your price. So the sales price of a, say, a $700,000 house, 6% is a lot of money. Sale price or loan? The sales price. All right, so it's the different. The concession is based on the sales price. Okay, so if we're talking about that to your loan fees and other recurring and non-recurring So if we're talking about a $500,000 loan, you could get 30000 from the seller, up to. For a 10% or more. For a 10% conventional, right? That's conventional. Right. Now, all right, keep going, because there's other, what's the next program? Uh, so an FHA loan is similar. So FHA has different loan limits by county. So specifically, it's a little over 640,000 for the Washoe County FHA loan limit, uh, but that'll allow you to put three and a half percent down and still get a 6% seller concession, uh, maximum for your closing costs, like buy downs. Uh, people use them for short term, long term buy downs, and like I said, all your other closing costs. All right, costs. so we have conventional 6%. FHA is 3.5%. What else is there? Well, you can do a conventional <coughs> loan with less than 10% down. It's just you're limited to 3% of the price towards seller concessions if you're putting less than 10% down. So that's okay. the only other difference. And a conventional less than 10% can go how long? What is the limit? Like 3%. 3%. So yeah. 3 to 7, three to 10%, you only get 3%. So that's, that's, that's something that you need to consider so, for a buyer. So you could look at that and say, well, if I did the FHA loan, I could have more money from the seller if the seller is obliged to agree with me on this. You yeah. got to get the seller to buy in first. Right. That's, we'll talk about that in a second. And then VA loans. What is the limit on VA loans? Technically, there is no limit on the amount of hmm. concessions to the seller, but it's limited on the actual closing cost up to two points maximum could be paid towards uh, discount points and the rest of the closing cost. But they, they allow you to do something really interesting on a VA loan. So if you have if you use the maximum 4% seller concession, you can actually use that towards all the closing costs and they'll allow the seller's funds to pay off a debt. So if you're almost paid off on your car, let's say you owe five grand left on your car, you can include that into your VA loan from the seller's concession. It's the only loan program that allows it. Okay, so you, if you're doing a VA loan, you better call Brian. This is why we bring Brian in because a lot of people don't know that. It can get complicated. It can get complicated, so keep that in mind. Two points. If you did without that, this is what's limited by the at VA. By the VA. Okay, so those are things that you need to consider. Now, um, a lot of deals are getting done. So if you're out there being a buyer and you're looking at houses and you're like, wow, I can't afford 550000 talk to your realtor or call us and start thinking outside the box. Like, all right, well, I can get up to 6%, $30,000, so I pay the higher fee. But I'm getting back, I'm clawing back 30000 out there to use to pay off all my, a lot of the reoccurring, non-reoccurring closing costs and buy down rate. 
And then that way you get into a house that you may not know that you can afford and make it affordable. And then in the future, hopefully when rates come down, you can refinance, correct? You, there's no prepayment penalty, so you would be eligible to refinance in the future. Uh, if you're using that too much seller concession, the whole point is to avoid having to have to refinance. Right. Take advantage of a lower rate that's not available to you today. I have no idea. Six six months, twelve months, twenty four months from now, if you could refinance, sure. Uh, but if nothing else, you have a thirty year fixed mortgage, and if you get the best, the lowest rate that's available now using these seller concessions, uh, it might avoid you from having to go through the cost of refinancing. Okay. So now, if you're a seller, a lot of good ideas right now is to in the listing. Beautiful house, but right after beautiful house, you might want to say seller with a qualifying offer um, will concede have some seller concessions to help buyers. I mean, is that a good strategy right now? I've seen that for like flooring specifically. I had I actually went to an open house recently, and that's just what one of the things they were offering was ten thousand dollar credit specifically to flooring. Uh, I think the the couple had dogs, and the dogs the floors needed to be replaced, so they were they recognized that, and instead of picking the carpet for you and replacing it for you. They were offering a credit to help offset that. Right. Now, a buyer could use that credit towards their flooring if they want. Uh, they could wait and do the flooring in a couple of years and use that money towards their closing costs, too. Right. So probably the best thing to do for buyers is to minimize all your closing costs and get a little better rate, correct? Well, that's why you have a realtor. So you, you need to negotiate what's right for you as the buyer, and then that's going to have to mesh with what's right to the seller. Right. That's how you negotiate a deal. So don't be just, you know, right off the house just because it's a little higher in price. Good idea to go look at it and then see what is available out there. Yeah, so. how long has it been for sale? More than 31 days? Maybe they're open to some suggestions. That's great. Now let's talk about no limits on owner financing, correct? So if no, there is a... There's no, yeah, that's it. You do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. It's, so it's, and that's another thing that you can do, um, a strategy if you're a buyer, last strategy out there, pro tip, is if you're a renter, uh, if you find out that a seller owns a house 100%, you can have your realtor ask if they're willing to carry a note, meaning that is the basically is the seller willing to be the piggy bank, and that gives you a lot more flexibility as a buyer. There's a lot less regulations you have to follow, correct? I mean, I, I don't know of any specific regulations. I'm sure there's a couple from the state of Nevada, but uh, there, you know, there's forms that the real estate you know division has put together to make sure that that's done you know on the up and up. Uh, but really, it's going to come down to, you know, if a seller doesn't owe anything on the house, right, that's their equity, they can decide to lend it to you as part of the deal. Like, if they're selling a $550,000 house, and they'll take 50000 down now right. and lend you the 500000 at whatever interest rate you can negotiate, yeah, absolutely. Consider that. So, I know that's not what well, Ryan would like to hear, but... Uh, I see a lot of uh, vacant lots go that way, because people will... You know, it's hard to get mortgages to, for a vacant lot. Just well, you're going to, you want to build your future home on it, so you don't want to take out the bank loan yet. You'd rather save that for a bank loan to construct the house, probably. All right, so we're not going to give out any more secrets because we want them to tune back in. So <laughs> um, we're at the end here. I know it's a little longer one, but a great discussion on what's going on in the market. Um, last topic I want to talk about real quick is where to – Brian's crystal ball, where do you think rates are going? I know it's on the spot. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. So as of October 31st, I'll call that the rates peaked. So I think the rates are going to come down, but not substantially. So uh, if they hit 8% at the end of October, we've already seen it pull back pretty significantly uh, to the mid-7s uh, in November. Uh, I anticipate that next year happens to be an election year. I have no you know, idea if that's going to have a sway on things, but it, it uh, makes me feel like we're, we'll see lower interest rates maybe with uh, maybe 6.99% come back around pretty soon. That would be great. So, all right, well, like our videos. Um, if you find this video useful and you have a friend, family member out there that's buying a house, wants to know about seller concessions, feel free to send it to them. It's going to be on YouTube. Like our videos, tune in. Um, our goal is to, you know, crest 5,000 views on this one. So awesome. let's do it. Let's do it. Thanks for coming in. Right. Until next time, you guys, uh, enjoy this nice fall weather, and we look forward to getting caught up next week. Take care. Thanks.